Nike, originally known as Blue Ribbon Sports, was founded by University of Oregon track athlete Phil Knight and his coach Bill Borman in January of 1964. In their beginning stage, Blue Ribbon Sports was engaged in the distribution of Tiger Shoes in the western United States. Tiger Shoes, now known as ASICs, were famous Japanese running shoes created by Onitsuka Tiger, one of the oldest shoe companies in Japan. When he first had the idea to create an athletic running shoe, Phil Knight partnered with Onitsuka Tiger because they offered cheap labor while still producing quality work. The company's swoosh trademark and the Nike brand name were created in 1971. In 1972, the company's agreement with Onitsuka Tiger ended, and in 1978, Blue Ribbon Sports became Nike. It's more than just a business. It's more than just sports. It is a mission. I mean, we, this is what we've committed our lives to doing, so let's make it something worthwhile. Originally, Phil Knight had hoped to name the company Dimension Six. The name comes from the Greek goddess of victory and was named by Nike's first employee, Jeff Johnson. An interesting fact many people may not know is that Nike's first shoe was made inside of a waffle iron. Bill Borman was a very innovative man. One morning after making waffles with his wife for breakfast, he discovered an interesting idea for a grooved pattern on the soles of training shoes to help athletes better grip running tracks. This idea spawned the Nike Waffle Trainer, which was patented in 1974. The Nike swoosh was designed by Portland State University student Carolyn Davidson for just $35, and the slogan, Just Do It, was inspired by Gary Gilmore, who said, Let's do it, just before being executed by a firing squad in 1977. I think, yeah, in many ways, the success that Nike has today really came out of the soul searching that was done in the mid 1980s when Reebok went past us. That essentially we had to decide who we were and what we were and, and try and build off of that and, and uh, really defend those values that uh, we really determined that dictated what our, our persona was. As a now, Nike is one of the world's largest designers, marketers, and distributors of athletic footwear, apparel, equipment, and accessories for a wide variety of sports and fitness activities. In earlier times, the athletic shoe market was ruled by German-made sneakers and tennis shoes manufactured by Adidas and Puma. None were really designed for running or jogging. Nike changed the footprint of the sports world through its unique marketing and branding by tapping into the feedback of its users worldwide. Nike has made understanding its heritage an intrinsic part of its corporate culture. It has been often translated that your past shapes your future, which is why these days Nike has a number of senior executives who spend much of their time serving as corporate storytellers, explaining the company's heritage to everyone from vice presidents and sales reps to the hourly workers who run the cash registers. The stories are not about extraordinary business plans or financial manipulations. It is, however, about people getting things done. We have a, a mission statement that says to bring innovation and inspiration to every athlete in the world. And there's an asterisk on the word athlete and a footnote that says, if you have a body, you're an athlete.
Internally, Nike will generally communicate through face-to-face -face interaction. However, if that is unable to happen, they will communicate through email. Companies have been relying on email as a primary method of communication for the past several years. Electronic communication can have a detrimental effect on any type of relationship, especially relationships with coworkers. Even if you had good intentions, electronic communication is often misinterpreted. Externally, normally the consumer contacts Nike, but there are times when Nike contacts the consumer. When this happens, they generally do it through Twitter or Nike.com. Nike has used an analysis of consumer needs based on the present products in the market. Nike aims to maintain a connection to their consumer at all times. Nike has separate departments for communication to stores. However, Nike communicates to the individual stores through email, conference calls, and the occasional supervisor visiting the local store. If the information needs to be spread down the hierarchy system quickly, it will go through email. The supervisor gets the email and passes it to its team. If the information is not urgent, Nike has an internal system which employees are to check regularly. Nike Distribution Centers also implemented a new system using Polycom's SpectraLink 8000 wireless telephones in 2002 to cut down on the delay of communication within the factory. In its internal communication, Nike uses a matrix organizational structure. This means that managers report to multiple departments based on unit goals, employee development strategies, or plans dealing with multidisciplinary responsibility. To track the progress towards the goals, the company uses scorecards. The communication flow starts with the supervisor, who passes the information to his supervisor. They pass information to their supervisor, and so on until it reaches the CEO. Nike has several meetings within their departments. Opinions are voiced, then sent to certain teams. The teams talk about changes that need to be done within, as well as the likes and dislikes. But normally, if an employee has a problem within the company, the team manager or supervisor will handle it directly, depending on the situation. Nike conducted their last all-employee satisfaction survey in fiscal year of 2008. Since then, they've been working to develop and deliver feedback channels available at any time that allow for unfiltered, in-the-moment employee input. Nike's technique used to develop and test products is to first capture the idea. It then goes to a design team who bring the item to life. Nike then sends the product to scientists who screen and evaluate items to make sure the product operates correctly. The testers then send the feedback to the development and design team, who have the task of fixing the imperfections. The two teams will continue the exchange until they are happy and satisfied with the outcome. Nike will occasionally send research and development staff to various factories to ensure the production is running smoothly. Nike does not manufacture their own products. They outsource the production because it is cheaper to produce overseas. Nike's clothing and footwear is manufactured by independent suppliers in over 450 factories around the world, mostly in Asia, and sold in nearly 160 countries. The cheer? Oh my God, what can I say about the cheer? It shows how much we work together and how we're a team. It's what creates the vibe, it's what sets the tone. It's something that raises the level of energy, it, it, it raises the expectation of the team. Everything about that cheer starts us off and gets us pumped up. Nike directly employs more than 30,000 people across the globe, from designers and marketers to compliance and accountants and retail employees. Nike primarily hires and promotes from within the company. However, if it is an open position that needs to be filled and no employees are available for the same position, then that's when the company goes outside the brand to fill the position. Having a career at Nike can open countless opportunities for employees to sharpen their skills and uncover their full potential. Nike offices around the world, including the three headquarter locations, foster a sense of community among employees and an electric atmosphere for professional growth, no matter the location. Nike's mission is to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. They truly believe if you have a body, you are an athlete. Nike's HR department holds competitive benefit programs that provide employees with the opportunity to stay fit, ensure the wellness of their families, and most importantly, maintain a positive working environment. For that reason, they give their employees the opportunity to receive a variety of health coverage, fitness center memberships, time off retirement savings, and more.
I rely on my athletes to bring Nike to life every day for my consumers. We're more than just a company, we're a culture. Not only makes you better, but it makes the people around you better. And happy athletes or happy consumers are people that buy and people that work, so all it does is makes us as a store even better than we already are. And that's tough because we're number one. Nike communicates through advertisement via Twitter, Facebook, and the Nike Plus app, which are the main social media sites that Nike uses, but there are many others. Um, Nike communicates through Twitter in a way that if someone was to tweet Nike, they will respond immediately. Also, Nike uses the Nike Plus Tom feed, which responds to tweets regarding order inquiries, stock information, and um, product details. Um, Nike communicates through Facebook by the Nike Plus Fuel Band, which is a training product that is digitally linked to accumulate Nike fuel points. Nike communicates through newspapers in the sports section appearing on uniforms and sports gear. The headlines and news stories take desirability to an even higher level where people not only want the product, but they have to have it for status, bragging rights, or their own self-identity. In 2013, First Lady Michelle Obama founded a children's exercise group that Nike pledged $50 million to. Nike has a training camp also that school-aged children attend every year. Nike was also the first U.S. collegiate license to begin listing the name and addresses of contract factories producing certain college-level products. When it comes to Nike communicating with other organizations, Nike communicates with different forms and organizations like the Global Impact and Nike serves as a broad member, as a board member of business for social responsibility. So Nike communicates through advertisement with their customers through um, phone calls, emails, messages, letters. Um, they do sometimes. They usually take between one to two business days for a response. As far as selling goes, Nike has store personnel who are trained to provide assistance in knowing more about the company's products. Direct marketing promotes new products to the target market. Sale promotions motivate new customers by showing them benefits such as the features of the products and the savings they can make by using the different discount coupons and promotions. Um, customer service is available 24-7 with Nike where someone can send the company a direct message about a complaint or a problem or just a question. The swoosh is on the shelves, it's on the street, and it's on the track. It's everywhere. The symbols and the logo are easy to read and remember, um, giving Nike kind of an advantage. The more that people see the Nike logo associated with successful athletes and the more comfortable they are about buying the products that use the same identifiers. Um, the swoosh experience has strongly been connected to hard work, dedication, human power, and desire to succeed. Um, also, Nike realized that the main key to its marketing brand is endorsement agreements with sportsmen and sportswomen, just to further help promote the brand. It's funny because I was telling somebody the other day that I worry about everything and, and they were quite astonished by the fact, but the truth of the matter is I do. Again, I think this is just a very, very competitive business and that, uh, that uh, you need to win on all fronts to stay ahead of uh, the competition. And that's having the best factories, having the best products, having the best endorsements, having the best ads. And uh, anytime you kind of stumble down that, uh, down that spectrum, uh, why somebody comes up and can knock you flat. At Nike, athletes play a very big role. Nike has endorsement deals and sponsorships in just about every professional sport. The endorsements of Nike athletes have been some of the biggest endorsement contracts in sports history. The top four sports endorsement contracts are with Nike, including Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and Cristiano Ronaldo. The biggest, of course, is Michael Jordan, who makes roughly $60 million a year off of shares of revenue from the Jordan brand. Well, the thing is, I never wore Nike shoes until I signed a Nike contract. Um, all through college, we wore Converse. And uh, up to that point, my favorite shoe was an Adidas shoe, you know. And at the time that everybody was starting recruiting me about what shoes to wear, uh, I was pro Adidas, you know, the whole time. And then... Um, once I went through the presentation with Nike, um, you know, they really made a grave effort of trying to, you know, have me have my input on the shoes, design any shoes that I wanted to wear. Uh, but then I was very loyal. I went back to Adidas, the Adidas contact that I had, and said, look, you know, this is the Nike contract. If you come anywhere close, you know, I sign with you guys. With Give me hands something. Down. Just anywhere close to what they were putting on the table. But at that time, Adidas was a Euro European brand product that they didn't really make a strong you know push for the states 
and they, they didn't feel like it was worth it, you know, which in, in hindsight is perfect for me. In 2003, LeBron James signed a seven-year, $90 million deal with Nike. Now he has reached a lifetime deal with the company, which is the biggest deal in the company's history. These right here, man. The LeBron Zoom Generation 1. Uh, this is where it all started. This right here is where it all started. 18-year-old uh, kid coming into the league and uh, had a, have an opportunity to have my own signature shoe, which I never, ever thought um, would be possible. Um, when it comes to an athlete getting their own shoe in Nike collection, Nike has a top-of-the-line research and development lab where athletes come when they visit the campus in Oregon. Um, they go through a series of tests, drills, and exercises, and they find out the specific needs that they need for their athletic wear. Motion capture is one of the tools we use. What it allows us to do is really objectively understand an athlete in motion. We use high-speed video. Most digital cameras capture around 30 frames a second. We can do 30,000 frames a second, so we can see things you don't necessarily see with the naked eye. Our force plates take thousands of measurements per second, and we get forces in three-dimensional space. We have environmental chambers. We can collect things like expired gases, so we know the amount of energy your body is using to do a particular movement. And in these chambers, we can accurately replicate weather from, from anywhere on the planet and make sure that our product is going to work in those environments. Professional athletes aren't the only people who help Nike bring in $30.6 billion a year. Nike sponsors such athletic programs. Out of these 92 programs, Ohio State University holds the biggest contract with a $252 million contract renewal for 15 years. Ohio State will receive $112 million in Nike products and at least $103 million in cash. Next to Ohio State, the biggest contracts are with the Michigan Wolverines and the Texas Longhorns. College athletes are required to wear Nike gear on and off the field to help promote the brand. In college football, Nike sponsors 61.7% of the Division I college football teams. Nike also sponsors a number of top-ranked high schools and AAU teams around the United States. Nike is beginning to use more celebrities in the branding process and giving endorsements to more than just athletes. Um, Drake and Kevin Hart are two of the big names associated with Nike now. Drake signed a deal with the Jordan brand, giving him his own collection of shoes. And Kevin Hart also has his own Nike shoe coming out called the Hustle Hart. Nike and myself did. They decided to team up with me, and they gave me my own cross-training shoe. Uh, right now, this is... I don't think you can see them good enough. No, I, I mean, think I can see that. Yeah, Watch yeah, out, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's better right here. That's nice yeah. stuff. Here, here's yeah. the dope thing. So um, more people like Fetty Wap and Travis Scott are, have also played a big role in the Nike Labs recent release. Mark in the loss column from Manny Pacquiao. The Filipino boxer turned politician just lost a longtime sponsorship deal with Nike. The athletic apparel brand cutting ties with the 37 year old world champion following his anti gay comments. Pacquiao, who is running for a seat in the Philippine Senate, told a local broadcaster this week he thinks gay people are, quote, worse than animals. Nike is very big on reputation, so um, as an organizational response to an athlete getting in trouble or making a mistake, um, Nike will withdraw or terminate their Nike contract. Um, in the recent years, we've seen Tiger Woods, Manny Pacquiao, Ray Rice, Adrian Peterson, and other athletes uh, get their contracts terminated with Nike because of mistakes made um, outside of their sport. Unstoppable. Clutch. Yochi. Ejemplo. Selfish. Obsessive. Tough. Winner. Leader. Fearless. Competitor. Unpredictable. Respect. Relentless. Genial. Maniac. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Wicked tones, you know what I'm saying? What's Products. Stand up in the motor west. Twitter.
Twitter and they have the Nike Plus app. Um, th mm. <laughs> 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 what do you mean? <laughs> I'm cry, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. For the gold burn. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Crump. You have a new, um, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> Blooper! Around with me, it'd be a tragedy. I won't break.